Are you scared of cutting a dog's nails too short? Do you wanna know how to cut them perfectly every time? My name is AJ, and in this video, I'm gonna show you all the techniques, tips, and tricks, as well as my secret technique to cut any dog's nails like a professional. My goal with this channel is to provide you with the best quality grooming information that I can, and together we will bring the grooming industry to a new standard. If you're already a pro at cutting nails, I bet you will still learn something new in this video, and if you can add more value, or if you think I suck, or I miss something, let me and everyone else know in the comments. For all the new groomers, once you learn how to cut nails, you need to practice what I'm teaching you as soon as you can to lock in what you've learned and develop the grooming skills that you need to become a grooming pro. So why do we have to cut dog's nails in the first place? Don't they wear down on their own? In their natural habitat, dogs and wolves run for hours, digging and hunting for food every single day. In modern society, most dogs don't run or dig enough to wear them down naturally. And if a dog's nails are allowed to grow unchecked, it will become painful for them to walk, and eventually it will cause harm to your dog. Side note, uh, animals will often hide any pain or discomfort that they're in to avoid their status slash safety and security within their group to be diminished. So it might not be obvious that your dog's in pain, even if they are. That's that's why it's so important to keep your dog's nails maintained regularly. A puppy's first nail trimming should be done between three and four months old, and a good rule of thumb is to cut your dog's nails every six to 10 weeks. The type of nail clippers I prefer are the scissor type, and there's also the guillotine type that work, but they have a few limitations. Quick Stop is a cauterizing agent that stops bleeding if you do cut the nail too short. Uh, some other household products like flour, cornstarch, or baking soda can each help stop any bleeding as well. You should have a slip leash to secure the dog and getting a second set of hands to help hold the dog still can be a huge benefit. Uh, and for some dogs, it's actually a necessity. So don't be afraid to do that. If you're gonna be doing it regularly at home, I recommend you invest in a grooming table. It is well worth the cost and your back will thank you. I'll have a link in the description to the products I recommend so that you can go check them out for yourself. Now, part of the secret to trimming the nails perfectly every time is understanding the anatomy of the dog's nail. You need to know where the blood supply is and what shape it holds inside the nail. There are four main parts of the nail that you need to know. First would be the hard outer shell that protects the top of the nail. Second, the softer underside where the outer shell actually connects. Third would be the blood supply or quick where all the nerve endings are. And fourth is the soft pulp that sits between the hard outer shell and the blood supply. After you make the first cut on a nail, you will be able to identify the pulp in two different categories. It will be either dry and flaky, showing the texture like a dried up lake bed, or moist and smooth like damp clay. The easiest way to find the blood supply is by looking through the side of the hard outer shell uh, and look for the pink color change in the nail and it will stop being visible part way down the nail. But that point that the quick is no longer visible is not the end of the blood supply. So you cannot cut all the way to the visible end of the quick. Our goal is to cut away as much of the dry and flaky pulp and get as close to the moist and smooth pulp as we can without breaking through the barrier into the blood supply. And if you're thinking, AJ, that's great, but what am I supposed to do if my dog's nails are black and I can't see the blood supply through the nail? Well, we can also know where the end of the blood supply is by looking at the shape of the nail. There are variations of the shapes depending on the dog's age, if they're large or small, and the amount of natural wear that their nails receive but you will usually find one of these three nail shapes. The first one would be puppy nails. Puppy nails under six months old almost always have a small, completely shelled portion of the nail, followed by a long, sharp, hollow hook that butts up directly to the blood supply. The second would be young adult dogs, which will often have a slightly longer portion of completely shelled nail, followed by a hooked portion that will be wider and more hollowed out than the puppies. If either of these first two types of nails are neglected, they are very likely to break. And when the nail is broken or damaged, it can sometimes look like a hollowed portion or even a hook, but the blood supply might be completely exposed and you do not want to cut it at all. So you have to be on the lookout for broken nails and be extra cautious when cutting a nail that was previously broken. The third type will have a long, almost completely shelled nail that may or may not have a small portion of hollowed hook at the end. When this type of nail is neglected, you will see some grow straight, giving the dog Freddy Krueger vibes, Others will grow with a slight curve, lifting the individual toes, which can lead to arthritis and abnormal bone wear in the toes and wrist. And many will grow with a sharp curve, which you might see make a complete circle and actually puncture a hole in the pad or the skin. 
When this third type of nail is black, it's the most difficult to know where to start because there isn't an obvious hollow hook and you can't see the blood supply through the nail. This type requires a careful approach to ensure you cut off as much as you can without making them bleed, and this is where my secret technique comes into play. Once you've mastered this technique, it will serve you on every single nail you will cut from here on out. The key to using this technique effectively is to understand how these three things change how the clipper cuts the nail. Where you place the clipper, the direction the clippers are pointed, and the angle of the cut that the clippers will make. The trick to proper placement of the cutting edge is to close the clippers just enough so that as they close down, each edge will gently touch the nail, making a little scratch that holds the clipper in place. If the placement is incorrect, release and open the clippers and try again. Once the placement is correct, you will then quickly, in one smooth motion, squeeze the clippers together, cutting the nail all the way through. Do not make partial cuts. Once you start cutting, commit to it. If you do make a partial cut and it bleeds, you will still have to finish cutting the nail in order to put quick stop on it. So commit to each cut. Now, if the nail is dark, completely shelled, and you can't see the blood supply, you will want the placement of the first cut to be near the end of the nail. However, if the nail is not round, but taller than it is wide, which is quite common, you should change the direction of the clippers, bringing the center lines of the clipper and the nail in alignment and making the first cut with the cutting edges of the clipper on the sides of the nail instead of the top and bottom. For each cut after the first one, you will no longer put both edges of the clipper on the outer shell to cut the entire nail. Instead, you will place one edge on the soft pulpy center and the other slightly down the nail on the outer shell, lower than the first edge. This changes the angle or tilt of the nail clippers, cutting about half of the nail with each cut. After each one, you'll need to inspect the pulp and continue switching from side to side, left to right, and sometimes front to back, targeting the highest points of the nail. Continue to make small cuts until the moist pulp begins to show evenly across the nail. This technique is ideal, in my opinion, because you can get very close to the quick, and anytime you expose that moist pulp, it helps draw back and recede the blood supply back to where it's supposed to be. And when you have cut too far, the amount of blood that I usually see is a tiny little red dot, and that's so minimal it doesn't even form a complete drop. It also cuts off all the sharp edges that scratch us the worst. And boom, just like that, you now know my secret technique. If you like it, you can't wait to try it yourself, show me some love, smash that like button, do it. If you think I've earned it, I guess. But if you don't think I've earned it yet, here are some additional tips to make the job easier and safer. Prioritize safety first, just in case they decide to tell you to stop with their teeth. Remember never to raise the foot too high. It should be below the hip or shoulder to keep the dog comfortable and avoid any injuries. I recommend you start with the same foot on every dog and move in a sequential order so that you don't forget or miss any of the specific nails. Any pattern or order is fine, you just have to stick with it once you develop the routine. Check for dew claws on every foot. This is another commonly missed nail. Some dogs have all of them removed except for one that was missed by the vet or somehow actually grew back. Those ones are creepy and they're often deformed. Keep an eye out for it. Double check your work. Be 100% sure that every single nail has been cut and that none of them are bleeding. Even if you did not smash the like button, I hope that you like this video and that you're on your way to becoming a grooming pro. Subscribe to the channel and ring the notification bell. See you in the next one.